Hi and welcome to Leitrim Daily. My name is Bethany Early and you're listening to the Sports Roundup Show here on the podcast. It's episode 236 of the show. Today is going to be dominated by the coronavirus and the new restrictions that have come in force in the county in the last 24 hours. We'll be talking to the chairman of Leitrim GAA, and Stenson, very shortly about what that means on the ground for Gaelic clubs in the county, and particularly the clubs still in action. It does mean that those clubs will have to wait to see what happens, plus, I suppose, chaos at underage level in the county. Meanwhile, there was some sport played over the weekend, and we mentioned Glencar Manor Hamilton, and the reason they're still involved in the championship is because they had a fantastic victory last week. Despite having, I think it's fair to say, a, a number of obstacles put in their place, 14 minutes of injury time, a very strange situation in a ladies football game the other day. I don't like criticising referees because it's an easy target and they get enough flack, but I witnessed the uh, fourth official uh, being told there were seven minutes of injury time at the game, but instructed not to put up the sign the referee almost hit 14 minutes, 13 minutes, 50 plus on the clock when she blew it up. Question marks over how long Mern Devani spent off the field for that yellow card she picked up later in the game. I'm sure there's a, a reason for why she was not allowed back into the field to play, but she was definitely off the field for longer than 10 minutes. Very unfortunate situation at the end. All that aside... Manor Hampton did come out the victors on the day and a fantastic victory 2.15 to 3.9 the score on Sunday afternoon in Drumshambo we'll hear some reaction from one of their selectors John Sheridan and also from their players Melissa Hewitt and Amanda Sweeney later in the programme stick around for that hurling final was the order of the day on Saturday afternoon in Park Sean McDermott and for the second consecutive year Carrick Harlan were made to work for it coming from behind with a late late goal to force injury time a James Glancy 21 metre free was uh, the difference between the sides at the end of normal time three points down deep into injury time cometh the hour cometh the man and James Glancy of course a veteran of many many Leitrim teams at senior level both hurling and football uh, he found the sweet spot and buried it in the back of the net to force extra time for that second year in a row uh, probably ill-deserved to be honest Manor Hampton the better side Clooney or should I say the better side on the day for the second year in a row but they just didn't have it in the legs another late goal in injury time of extra time so Carrick take the spoils 215 to 18 points I felt really really sorry for Clooney at the end of the game but it does go to show that the game does continue right until the final whistle we saw that in spades we'll hear from uh, their manager Hilary Phelan and the man of the moment James Glancy after the game on Saturday as well as hearing from Gavin O'Hagan who won the man of the match award despite being on the losing side on Saturday afternoon in soccer at National League level, of course, Niall Moran in action for Sligo Rovers on Friday evening. They faced Shamrock Rovers live on RTE2. It wasn't to be for Sligo Rovers. Shamrock Rovers ran out winners rather comfortably in the end. 4-0, uh, a crazy mistake, a very unfortunate mistake from the goalkeeper. Uh, led to the first goal and it was open season from there. To be fair to Ed McGinty, in the Sligo Rovers goal, he pulled off some amazing saves and he kept the scoreline fairly conservative at 4-0. A good performance from Niall, although he won't be happy with the finished result in that particular game. The Samrock Rovers look like they are on course to win the title. and I can't really see anybody taking any further points off them if they can keep the form up like this. Some Irish call-ups uh, from Sligo Rovers. Ed McGindy that we mentioned called into the Irish under-21 side. He is one of the brightest talents in the league. And exciting to see what he has in store. He's local as well. He's just from outside Ballyshannon. So uh, close enough to the Leitrim border up there in the north of the county. p United, they were in action in the quarterfinal of the FAI Women's Senior Cup. And they managed to see off the challenge of Shelburne, their title rivals, in a 1-0 victory. A little bit tighter than the 6-1 victory of the previous week. But Dervla Byrne and her teammates will be more than happy to progress to the semi-final and to see Shelburne out of the cup. Uh, It leaves the door wide open. Wexford probably the biggest challenge ahead of the next couple of weeks and see whether Dervila can finally get across that line. She's been in that final a number of times. She'll be looking to take a winner's medal out of it this year. Longford Town badly beaten at the weekend as well. They went down 6-2 to Galway United. Having been 2-0 up in the first half, uh, they'll be very disappointed with their second half showing in that particular game. 
six two to go away there. It leaves the promotion race in the SSC Electricity League first division wide open. Five or six teams going for those one automatic spot and four playoff positions. In rugby in the Energy a Community Series in Connacht and Leinster, we had some Leitrim representation. Jack Gilheny lined out for Old Belvedere in their 22-15 defeat to UCD in the Belfield Bowl on Saturday afternoon, while in Sligo, Matthew Early at Hooker for their 25-15 victory over Galwegians. A good day for Sligo Rugby as they beat the second-ranked team in that particular competition although they won it last year they wouldn't be the favorites going in but they've now put themselves in as the favorites put the first two wins from two games uh, so the best luck to both players as they continue their bid to qualify for the semi-finals of the All-Ireland Cup in just a few weeks time Looking just a little closer to home, let's give you a full rundown on the Leitrim GA results from the weekend, starting with Saturday afternoon's games. And we start with that Leitrim Senior Hurling Championship final. Carrick Hurling 215, Clunin Mont 18 points after extra time. In the Junior B football semi final, Alan Gales 112, Melvin Gales 2 6. While in the Junior C football championship final played in Drumshambo on Saturday evening, Leitrim Gales 12 points, Nave Porrick Drummer Hare. 1-6. There was two underage county finals played as well in Division 1 of the Under-15 Championship. St Mary's Kiltard, they won that Under-15 Championship title on a scoreline of 6-15-3-9 over McTiermann the Gales. While in Division 2A of that Under-15 Football Championship, Rin Gales were victorious 4-13-2-6 over St Joseph's. Sunday afternoon, the second Junior B Football Championship semi-final took place. Drum Kieran 1 9, Mohull 1 10, a one point victory for Mohull in that game. They'll go on to face Alan Gales in the final when we don't quite know when that will be played. While in Junior A football, Clune 1 8, Glencar Manor Hamilton 10 points, and Ahavas 1 14, Glenfarn Kilty 8 points. In the Sligo Leitrim League at the weekend, two Leitrim teams in action. Manor Hamilton's game called off because of Covid with Real Tubber. Of course, all games now fallen by the wayside for the foreseeable future. But over the weekend, there were two games of Leitrim interest played. And Drum Hare drew two all with Callery Bowes in Hazelwood. Anthony Hennebury gave Drum Hare the lead from the penalty spot on 30 minutes. But Callery Bowes were back level seven minutes later when ex Callery Bowes player Adrian Fowley scored an own goal. Just before the break, Owen Nicholson had Callery Bowes ahead. And it was on the hour mark when Jamie Conlon rifled home a glorious equaliser to earn Drummer Hare a well-deserved point in that excellent encounter in Hazelwood on Sunday morning. Carrick Town, they also made the long journey to Glenview Stars, a most rewarding trip, hitting three goals without reply at Fort Hill. Joint leading scorer in the division, Shane Byrne, hit two goals to bring his league tally to five in just four games, while Ryan Duarte put the icing on the cake with a third goal for the town. Stars had their chances, but in the end, poor finishing left them well adrift. The other scores in those games, in the Super League, Ballastadair United 1, Arrow Harps 2, Ballymote Celtic 3, Carberry FC 7, MCR 2, Cliffany Celtic 0, Ahana Celtic 1, Cartron United 2, Strand Celtic 6, Merville United 4, and Real Tubber vs Manor Rangers postponed. In the Premier League, the second tier of competition, Colry Bowes 2, Drumahair 2, as we mentioned, Glenview Stars 0, Carrick Town 3, Kulani United 3, St John's 2, Ballygawley Celtic 3, Gurchin Celtic 3, Chaffpool United versus Kilglass Enniscrone United also postponed due to Covid situation. And that means on the league table Manor Hamilton sit in 4th place with a game in hand in the Sligo Southern Hotel Super League table, 5 points behind both Carberry and Cartran, although they haven't played them yet. There are, of course, no games coming up in the foreseeable future, so that won't change for the next few weeks, but teams will continue to train. In terms of the Sligo Palettes Premier League, we have some really good news for the Leitrim teams in there. Both teams currently three points off the top of the table in fourth and fifth place. Carrick Town and Drumhair both on seven points after the weekend's action. Kulani United still the team to beat ten points and no defeats so far for Kulani in that Premier League table. On Sunday afternoon in Connacht rugby competitions in the Junior Cups, the Curly Cup saw Carrick versus Balna postponed due to COVID. 
and that means that the points will be shared for that car currently sitting on the bottom of the table in that particular group. In the Cawley Cup, Sligo's reserve team well beaten by Castlebar, 24 points to 3 in Hamilton Park in Strand Hill. So a disappointing day for, I suppose, Carrick not to actually get to play a game, but also for Sligo, uh, they beaten badly in that particular game. It does mean that neither team will have a chance to redeem themselves for the next couple of weeks. Now, of course, most of our listeners will already have read the statement that came out from the GAA yesterday. I'm joined by County Board Chairman Enda Stenson, Councillor Enda Stenson, to have a chat with us about what this might mean for, uh, I suppose, our clubs, our members, our teams across the county and further afield. Enda, you're very welcome back to the programme. Thank you very much, Brett. Thank you for having me. No problem at all. Thanks for coming in to clarify this. Uh, before we start, I might just read a little bit of the statement from the GAA yesterday. And it is titled GA Club Game Suspended with Immediate Effect. And it's a decision of the GA Management Committee. Yesterday, they endorsed the decision to suspend all GA club games at all levels with immediate effect until further notice. The decision has been taken in the interest of public safety following a number of incidents that have been brought to our attention in recent days, in particular, post match celebrations and a lack of social distancing at certain events have proved disappointing and problematic. That's very self-explanatory, and there. But your thoughts on on find do you probably find out the same way as everybody else did uh, with the announcement publicly yesterday morning? Oh, absolutely. And uh, I knew that the meeting was taking place yesterday morning, and I was pretty sure of what the outcome of the meeting was going to be because incidents had happened, we see, over the, the past number of weeks, and that's not late term or whatever. But um, I think the final straw was what happened with the parade in Cork. You know, and it was it, it seems ridiculous in the the present climate that we're in and the pandemic and all that was happening that people would organise a parade through the town. Um, no social distancing, thousands of people there. Look at I know that the club is everything and there was such excitement I'd say in Cork with that victory. It was just but it's the very same every other. We saw it in Dunyan. We saw the county final in Cavan. We saw it here in Leitrim. You know, and, and the sheer volume of excitement that comes over the local person when they see their own people having done good, having won. It happened even at a, a Division 3 or a, a Sea Championship game with Leitrim Gales would say, you know, people converge on the team. It's not the team's fault. It's the natural reaction of how we were brought up, and that's how it all is. I mean, and to get away from that is not a very easy thing. Yeah, and I, I know, not to be slightly off my club, but it did happen on Saturday night, as you mentioned, but it has happened in other sports as well, and in other, in other codes and in other grades too. I know there was a game, one springs to mind, I'm not picking on it because it's your club, because you'll go at mine, but um, Muckle won the intermediate ladies, and Sean O'Sullivan was on the loudspeaker that day, and I... I heard him at least three, if not five times, ask people not, not to go on to the field, and those pleas were ignored. Yeah, and, and that, that was universal. I'm not just I'm picking that one oh, game as an example, no, 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 that, that, but that was universal that, across you know, the board. That is the very same everywhere, right across the board, right across different counties, and I have been at games in different places, and not even county finals, where people have rushed in on the field. That happened that day in Baltimore. I saw it with my own eyes that. There's no denying that, but that is not an isolated incident. Yeah, I don't, I don't, and this has been happening right across the county, right across the country, and the GAA has to take a stand. You know, and I know we were vilified and criticised when we maybe closed doors uh, in the interest of health and safety, and people were not happy with that. But it was with this very issue in mind that we thought that if in the interest of health and safety, and everybody has to go back home. Some people could have had their parents, some people could have a sick child, somebody could have something. In the interest of health and safety, I didn't think it was the right thing that people should be able to rush on the fields and start embracing this, that, and other. But that's what happened, and that's basically why the decision yesterday morning was taken that uh, no longer can we have a club house. I think that's, that's a huge pity. For a lot of clubs, and in particular, I just want to say, it's a huge pity for particularly four clubs in Leitrim, for Gartletra and Anadop in the intermediate final. 
they have worked extremely hard uh, since June, you know, to prepare themselves for this. That intermediate fine should have been played two weeks ago, only for COVID issues. And it's so disappointing for those players. The same with Ahavas and Tillman in the Junior A final. They're two, two very powerful clubs within the county. And it's, it's so disappointing that they have kind of started to rebuild, they've come to the point of a junior final, and now it's off. I'm just so bitterly disappointed in particular for those four clubs. It's just because there's nothing like county final day being played for your club in the county final. It's wonderful. But Covid has got the better of a lot of people and a lot of things. I think we better throw Glencar Manor ladies into that mix as well. Absolutely. They're prepared for a, a comic final. And for some of those girls in particular, um, they had an All-Ireland final at junior schools level cancelled two or three years ago. Oh, yeah. They missed the All-Ireland this year and now they're in a kind of final and I know we smirk about it because it's it's almost laughable, it's so it's unfortunate. It, can you just imagine, I, I'm, those girls had done the county proud last week, they had done the county proud last week and they got to their kind of final and was in with a very good time, and they're an excellent team, a very talented team is that Manor Hamlin team with some exceptionally talented lady footballer Charlotte and there was no doubt that they were looking forward to that but hopefully Hopefully, within a month, it's possible that those games could still go ahead mid-November. I, I just suppose, hope. I suppose most people's attention now turn. We, we don't know what's going to be in the case in three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, whatever. Well, at least sense. they can still train. Grounds aren't closed. They can train in smaller groups. There can be no games, no challenge matches. But they can train. In, so at least it will keep them involved and it will keep the mind right. What's happening with the inter-county scene? Do you have anything you can tell us about what we can expect? Because under the regulations, games can go ahead at that level, but realistically, can you see that happen? As of now, and I know that the, the, the views of Leighton management and all this, but as of now, Leighton will be travelling to Park Ashler in Newry on Saturday week. Obviously, um, obviously the, the north of Ireland has a much more concentrated COVID situation than the Republic does. Is that a worry for you on a personal note? Personally, would, would you be travelling to the game? Personally, it's a worry, but as chairperson of the county board, I would be expected to travel, and as chairperson of the county board, if the team are travelling, I would travel. And it would be expected that the secretary and chairperson would travel. I don't and worry. that's a worry. It's a definite worry, absolutely. I have no qualms about that. But that's the situation that we are in, and they are the jobs we signed up to and sometimes you have to do things that maybe you don't want to do or you don't like doing but having to travel to Park Estra on that Saturday evening is not the most inviting thing but it's something that we have to do and it's something that if the county team and the young lads are going to play we will be there. Obviously the young lads, as you mentioned on the team, will probably just want to play at this point and get those games done and dusted and, and finish off the season whatever way it's going to end. In terms of Leitrim's commitment, and I'm going to be a bit kind of playful with it now, but could we have a situation where as teams fall into these situations with lockdowns and can't play, that teams that maybe, say for example is not breaking Mayo in the next couple of weeks, could we be looking at a situation where Mayo aren't allowed to play us, we get through, and could Leitrim actually benefit with a good run in the uh, competition this year. Is, <laughs> that that is totally, is that is totally hypothetical. It's totally realistic that that could happen. Hmm. But uh, I certainly would not go down that road. I, Should we start sending you to Yeah, I'd love to eliminate Mio from the Championship on any given year. And this year was a pretty strange outfit. But uh, if that happened, it would be strange. But if we... If you wouldn't have any objections. I have no objection whatsoever. I, <laughs> Particularly with Dan Mio, I'm not, uh, you know, it's not the most enticing thing, but we took him on before. We beat them before. The great day in 94, Dan Mio, we beat him. It was to say what happened. In terms of, I suppose, from the club player and the, and the club official and coach point of view, what's that club for the next couple of weeks? Well, the outlook is that clubs can trade. Uh, we have a lot of our championships and a lot of our games played, thankfully, and we have had. Uh, great success and we have had a wonderful senior championship, we've had a wonderful intermediate and junior championships all today it has been exceptionally high standard and that seems to be right across the board, right across the country but for the next few weeks the teams that are still involved 
can train him. They can't play, as I said, they can't play a match, they can't play, but they can still train, like there's no dressing rooms available to them, that, but the pitches are not closed, they can get out there and train. It's, it's hugely disappointing, we're coming into the winter, you like to be trying to finish it up now, the second week of October I think is the time that you'd like to be finishing up. That can't happen with some clubs now because undoubtedly we will get a chance or a window Unless there's a total lockdown, that's that's possible as well. But I, I genuinely hope there's I hope I genuinely hope there's not. At least you know, we're at we're at level three. We can go to level five, but I think that's good. It is a huge uh, credit to the work of the CCC and the oh, Metro County yeah. Board that of all the club championships to be played, you're talking about two fixtures within the county. Absolutely. That's it, at our level. No, I, I can tell you, like, the, the CCC, like, you know, and I know that they can be vilified at times by, by a club for making fixtures on Royal Wood here, but they have stride, might, and main to get the fixtures that they could be played and that we could get over the line on a certain date. We had hoped that it would be finished last weekend. Uh, it just didn't work that way. That was disappointing. It would have been great to be finished, but I have to pay huge tribute to everybody from the CCC, to the second year county board, Declan Bowman, who's a maestro in, 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 in organisational ability, you know, they can, can do anything. To, the, to our officials, like the referees, you know, they had to go out and do their job. They did it, and we never had an issue probably this year. We were extremely lucky, you know, and so I'm proud of them from that point of view. As I said earlier, just disappointed. We're down to two games, and that there's four clubs involved. We didn't get it, but we will get it over the line. In terms of underage, that's pretty much looks like it's come by the wayside for the it's, foreseeable future. Oh, absolutely. I, I, I cannot imagine, you know. But you have a lot of the finals played. I know there was another 40, uh, 13 final. You know, I was yeah. hoping they played on Monday night, but it was, uh, everything was called, so there was nothing could have been done. But your heart does go out to you know, other 13 players. The final is a big, big thing for them. You know, it's like an all for them at that stage. Yeah. Oh my god, it's everything, it's everything. But their disappointment only lasts a short while. They will be out kicking the ball and they will be back running and they'll enjoy it. Well, There'll be bigger disappointments in life with those things as well, life goes on. And thanks very much for dropping in and uh, having a chat with us and explaining to us what the impact is locally as well. It's, it's, it's an unfortunate situation, but I think probably one that was unavoidable. Absolutely, and as I said before, what has happened is totally understandable. I just want to say thank you for having me here, and I want to thank you for the amount of work that you have done on the sidelines that you have done before games and the promotion that you have given to the GEA and long may it continue. I think this year has been wonderful from this aspect of the GEA. So I personally, I just want to say very to you, thanks a million and oh, oh, very best to you, luck to you going forward. Thank you very much, Anna. And so we'll get on with the actual interviews in the show today. In ladies Gaelic football, as we mentioned, we were at the semi-final of the Connacht Ladies Intermediate Football Championship. Glencar Manor secured their place in the Connacht final. When it's going to be played, who knows? Uh, it's really unfortunate for the girls, particularly those who have already experienced the heartache of missing out on final opportunities on the double with that St. Clair's team from earlier this year and also from a few years ago with a junior schools team. I can only imagine what it must be like going on in, in that world at the moment with their third final called off and not known if and when that will be played. I'm sure it will be played at some point in the future, but for the moment, uh, not likely to be in the next couple of weeks. After the game, we caught up with John Sheridan, Melissa Hewitt and Amanda Sweeney. John Sheridan, Ruffy. you must be delighted with that. Absolutely delighted. We're absolutely thrilled with it. To go on further, you know, to get into Connacht and then uh, to win the senior championship, then to come to the Connacht round and then win it and win it in such a tight game and the conditions, just fantastic. We're absolutely delighted. The girls are absolutely delighted. You can see the conditions written all over your face there. It's, <laughs> it's cold, it's wet, it's oh, been a miserable day. Yeah, my hands are numb and everything, but listen, it's, it's, war, it's worth it. It's all worth it. It's, it's fantastic. Talk to us about the game because you had a healthy lead at certain parts of that game. They just never seem to know well, when to quit. You know, Breffley, they're the Mayo champs. They're not Mayo champs for nothing. They're, you know, they're a good team. Uh, we knew they were a good team. They got off to that quick start that we knew, but they, they got off to it. They got us a quick goal in us. Um, they stayed with us all the way, but you know, we were just determined. We dogged it in. 
and it was a dog fight at the end but just we came out on the right side and I'm delighted for the girls absolutely delighted talk us through those last uh, injury time moments and there was plenty of them 14 and, a, and something minutes we, yeah, we, we well, clocked Merlin had got the card and of course we were very worried then when Merlin got the card and she wasn't going to come back on because there was only 7 minutes left when she got the card so we had a dog in really hard you know we had a few injuries there was a few tight tackles out there um, it was just it was a war of attrition briefly, a war of attrition at the end and just we came out the right side of it you know a couple of girls looking like they were worse for wear almost from the start of the game Alva Alva, Clancy yeah Alva's been injured since the senior final she hasn't trained uh, she just came back today she got strapped up yesterday but she was so determined to play and in fairness she was a key player there today for us and even injured like you can see the damage she done even carrying an injury if she was fully fit Brittany we wouldn't have been we'd have been out the gap by more <laughs> yeah because she looked she looked like she could barely walk yeah, but she, yet yeah, she well, still cropped in with a fair score at one stage yeah I think she got 1-5 uh, one 1-6 one in fairness yeah at one stage we were going to bring her off we really seriously thought about bringing her off but she's such a talismanic footballer she's brilliant and we just couldn't and even when she came on, as I said, with half a leg, she still did a lot of damage. Uh, Derva Rooney also looked like oh, she picked Derville up Derville towards fantastic. the end. Uh, Derva, we had an awful problem. With, uh, we, we were down our midfielder, Aoife Kimartin, was down. We had Derva into midfield because she's had a fantastic season in the half-forward line. She was fantastic in the county final against uh, Bellamore. She was doing so well in the half-forward line, but you know, for the sake of the team, she came back in the midfield today, and again, she was absolutely superb. He did a nice job on Lisa McCaffrey because she brings a huge threat. Yeah, well, you know, PC in fairness had his homework done. Uh, he had a bit of uh, information down there that she was their threat. We put Amanda, we had, a, we, we had an extra person on her and it worked. Yeah, it did work. We have to, we had to, and even that, she was still a very good footballer. She did well. Is there a kind of intermediate title in yes, this Yes, there is, of course, without a doubt. No doubt about it. We're going for it. Excellent. Listen, well done today. Cheers, Congratulations buddy. on a fantastic season. Hopefully, we don't have, we have a couple more games to go. Hopefully, hopefully it's in drier conditions, hopefully. <laughs> Melissa Hewitt, yeah, you look very happy after that. Happy with the result? Yeah, very, very happy. Relieved now it's all over and, you know, we went out and got a win out of it. What were you expecting coming into the game today? We didn't really know. We weren't familiar with the team. Um, we were expecting them, you know, to hit the ground running and come at us hard. Uh, we were expecting that, yeah. Um, but the team was, you know, well able to adapt at this stage. They came out pretty quick and uh, had a bit of a worry maybe at the start of the, at the first half? A wee bit, but we knew it was going to take you know a few minutes for us to kind of get our bearings and kind of see see what's what. What well, kind of an impact do the conditions have on our game today? Because that was tough out there today, just to stand it in, was. never mind play a game. <laughs> it was. Um, I don't mind the rain. I'd prefer to be cold than roasting. But the wind then, when the wind picked up, like it was very tough to kind of judge and to run against. But we just ran it through the hands, I suppose, once it did get windy and that, that kind of suits us as well. You seem to have some nice uh, go-to players that you can kind of find. They're always available nearly, it seems. When, you, when you're watching in the likes of Murren, Leah, Dervla running off yourself when you get the ball, it just seems to have that, that nice kind of rallying effect on the team. That's it. Like It's great to have them girls, like you know the go-to girls as you call them, but everybody works really, really hard. I and mean, when you have girls with that quality at the end of the ball, that's you know really what you want. Talk to me about Alba Clancy as well because it looked like she probably wasn't fit enough to start the game but yet she still ended up with I think 1-6 by the end of it. Yeah, she was. She did have a wee bit of um, a niggle the last week or so but she's, she's tough. She, she was Adam when she was playing and that was that and she's, she's top class so she was always going to be a danger. What's going through your head in that last 14 minutes of injury time that they played? I don't know, was she ever going to blow it up? Um, no, I knew the girls. You know the the mentality now, like they were never ever going to give up, and I just I just knew I had the belief in us that we were never going to give up. So I was I wasn't too too worried. We just got word that you faced Giva in the Connacht kind of final. Uh, I'm not sure when it is, maybe next week or the week after. Uh, what do you do between now and then to prepare, or is it just really just continue the same momentum forward with this team? Yeah, just continue, keep ourselves ticking over, and um, get a bit of recovery. And I think we're happy enough, like the way we're we're going at the minute. So just keep everybody injury free and taking over. Any lessons learned from today? Um, I suppose just never give up, like that's what got us through our final and that's what got us through today. You know, if we have the belief that we can do it and we're going to just keep on going. How far can this team go? Obviously, kind of final now, there's also an All-Ireland series after that. If you're, if you're good enough to get that title in the bag, um, what, how far can this team go in this championship this year? if we stick to our, our game plan and you know all work hard together we can there's no stopping us we can go as far as their team will bring us I suppose but once we got over I think St. Joseph's they were our kind of our team that we couldn't get past so once we got over that we're kind of 
was it that semi-final victory that really gave you that kind of belief in yourselves that you could actually go on and and achieve what you've done since? Absolutely, yeah. I think it was more of a mental thing for us, you know. Um, because I suppose St. Joseph's were the ones we used to meet in the final all the time. So I think once we got over over that kind of mental block, everyone kind of we kind of seen that we could do it. You know, so the girls are just raring to go and see see how far we can get. Well, listen, congratulations today. Well done on a fine performance, a great victory, and uh, best luck in the Connacht final. Nice, that's a nice way to do it. <laughs> First time ever. <laughs> Amanda Sweeney, uh, some some game today, awful conditions. Yeah, it was. It was brutal. But I suppose look at, you know, the conditions are, are the same for both teams. So they had as as, as much as we had it. So, but yeah, it's, it's it's it was messy, very messy. You had a very defensive uh, task today to keep uh, Lisa Caffrey quiet, but you managed to do it fairly well. Uh, in terms of the game, uh, what's the mood within the camp? Obviously, you're delighted. Yeah, we're delighted. We are delighted. You know, like any team, I suppose we've worked really hard. Uh, you know, and and uh, obviously winning the the, the championship in Eton was super for us and. We just said we could see if we could take it one step more and try and get the win today. So that's what we've done, and that's all we were focusing on. And we're, we're delighted. We're delighted to get over. The line. In terms of the game today, you had a healthy lead about ten or fifteen minutes to go, eight points up, but they just kept creeping back in, and a, a goal, a bit of a confusing goal. Yeah, yeah, they did. No fair play to them. In fairness, it was it was a really tough battle from the very start, and uh, they just kept the pressure on us and kept the pressure on us. And look at the game could have went any way in the end. We're just delighted that we ended up on the good side of it. Is that kind of what you expect at this level when you come into a kind of club championship? Absolutely, and it's like any team we even play in Leitrim, like, you know, you don't know what you're going to face and you take every game as it comes and, you know, every team we've played, including this team, has, has thrown something new at us and we just deal with it as best we can in each game that we're going to play. That second half seemed to go on forever. It did, yeah, it did. <laughs> what was going through your head as the, as the minutes ticked on into that extra period of play? Um, I, I just thought the final whistle was never going to go, to be honest. Um, I, I, I wasn't sure what was in it, I wasn't sure how long was left, but I, I was delighted just to hear the, the whistle go at the end. How much are you looking forward to the kind of final now, whenever it comes up? We're really looking forward to it. Um, we'll, you know, uh, settle, I suppose, settle down this evening and we'll um, meet tomorrow probably and we'll uh, just take it from there and whoever we're playing, we'll, we'll try and, and push on and see if we can get a win. Well, listen, well done today. Congratulations on a fine victory and best luck in the final. Thanks very much. Thank you. And the county senior hurling final also played this weekend. Uh, it was the great escape, as you'll hear Hilary Phelan tell us in a few minutes. They used their get-out-of-jail card a couple of times in this game. Let's hear from Hilary Phelan, the manager of Carrick Hurlan, as well as James Glancy, who got that all-important injury time goal, and Gavin O'Hagan, man of the match, although on the losing side. James Glancy, uh, fairy tales are kind of made of that last-minute winning goal in the final, and it came to pass for you today. You left it late, though. We did leave it late. We probably probably didn't deserve a, a draw out of it for, for the most part. We um manner were dominating the game there for the most part of the game so um to get a to get a draw down it was uh, it was just a relief to get to get another few minutes um to, to play on. You've played in a fair few of these county finals over the years, but how does it compare uh, to the previous wins? Um but still every, any win I tell you it's it's a lot easier being on the winning side than the losing side. So um, any day you win is a, is a good day, and, and they're they're hard earned. Any 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 championship we've won in the last ten years has been hard hard earned. Been Manor Hamilton are a right good side, so um, they're every every single one of them is hard earned, and and I mean I mean I mean as much. In terms of the, that game, what's going through your head? Injury time, a goal down, and the ball thirteen meters out from the goal with a aligned line with five or six of them on the on the line what's going through your head as a as a striker that ball not a lot not a lot it's just um no just to get a good a good connection on the ball and that was that was the main thing and then um after that um anything, anything can happen so lucky enough it was uh yeah it's it probably the only ball i hit all day but um yeah it was just uh once i made the connection it, it gave us it gave it a chance and uh lucky enough it went in do you think maybe uh the best team probably threw it away at the end um, yeah, look, yeah, I'd have to I, from from where I was standing. I think Manor Hamilton were the better team for most parts of the game. But um, I suppose we stuck in there and we just we kept we kept clawing away. We just kept kept ourselves in the game and and you know when the chance when the chance came at the end, lucky enough we, we got the goal out of it and that, that was literally all that was in between the between the teams. On a personal note, it's a 
two week. It's a week since the county final, the football final. Yeah. How long did it take you to get your, yourself up off the ground and back into ah, look, mindset for this? We were back. We had a game there Wednesday night, so it was it was um, it was good to get your mind off, put your mind on other things. So um, yeah, it's always it's always good to take your mind off them kind of things. So um, it was good to have something to look forward to this weekend. Well, listen, uh, congratulations today on a on a well earned championship victory. Another one's that four in a row, five in a row. Um, I don't. I think it's three in a row, uh, or maybe four. I, yeah, sir. Um, you win yeah, so many, no, you don't even keep count anymore. <laughs> yeah, a listen, lot. congratulations yeah. today, and uh, enjoy the celebrations. All right, cheers, Brett. Thanks very much. Hillary, feeling it feels like you maybe used your get out of jail free card there today with a, a late snatch in both normal time and extra time. But you're uh, county champions again. Congratulations. Get out of jail card. We used more than one of them. I, I, um, that was a uh, heart stopping stuff. You know it's. it's, it's it was tough at times to watch from our lads, you know, they were, men are, are as I said in the paper during the week, they're, they're dogged, they will never give up, and in fairness to our lads as well, they didn't give up either. If that, James Lancy, if somebody else was uh, lined up to take that free, and in fairness, at the end of normal time, they were, whenever he scored it, he took it on his own shoulders and he put it in the corner of the net, and that was one of them, that got us out of the first one, and then we think... Well, he's at least came and claiming the credit for her. Jamie Ward came in with a flick at the last second and put the next one in the net. And you're going, like, that was going to go to 65s, believe it or not, in a Leitrim Hurland final. Uh, I was hoping it wouldn't, and thank Jesus it didn't. In terms of the sports profile in the county, obviously it's quite a low-profile game. There's really only the one county championship with the two teams in the county. But to produce such a, a tight game is really a testament to how strong the sport is in the county, underneath the radar, albeit. Oh, yes, and there's a lot of people who don't even know the game was on today, and that's always the way it has been. But both Manor and Carrick, like they're, they're, they love, as Kevin Glancy said in his song, they love their hurling, um, and it is the truth. Like You could see it out there. Nobody was giving up in that game. There was nobody hiding in it. There was no place to hide. Um, I'd say if you know a few more was at the end, actually there was a healthy enough crowd over on the side, but it is a great game to watch at times you know uh, especially when it goes in full flow and you see some of the scores that are taken out and like Michael O'Brien there from Manor Hamilton he hit monstrous free from the under the old stand I couldn't believe the score he put over and he wasn't too far off on another a lot of them lads like I was looking ahead there 11 of the Carrick team has come through the setup that I was involved with at underage level a certain amount has come through the Manor and that's what's feeding it on it's keeping going that and there's a lot of those lads involved with the county setup because there is only the two clubs. You're picking the best off both panels into the county setup, and they know each other intently, and uh, <laughs> that's why it becomes so close. In terms of, I suppose, the overall uh, day uh, county final, it's a big day for big players, and none less so than James Glancy. He's been there thereabouts for the best part of 20 years for this team, and he's uh, he came up against Trumps today. Look at James Glancy. <laughs> James Lancy did it in Crow Park in, in our All-Ireland all, all final there. Uh, in the Lorimar final, was it last year? Or the year before? I can't remember at this stage. I think it was last year. Um, he did it again there today. He's just, as you say, the big player step up. At the last second, he stepped up there, come from centre-back, or actually came up from full-back, and net it. You can't ask any more of a fellow that, you know? Two yellow cards for Colin Morton. He still got to lift the cup at the end of the day. A, a bit of a mixed bag for him. What's your own thoughts on the, the two yellow cards and the oh, ultimate like, dismissal oh, look, it is what it is he, 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 there's no doubt he, he definitely deserved his yellow cards um, you know these things happen in a game I'm delighted you know that he stayed on the field as long as he did because in fairness he's a fair player for us and we need him there as much as possible but with those lads especially the Martins you're nearly always guaranteed one of them is going to get gate it's only a matter of which one well listen congratulations uh, today well done another t- title in the bag for Carrick Ireland Thanks, Bradley. Gavin O'Hagan, what are your thoughts after that? Ah, sure, look, it's very disappointing. Like, I thought, like, I suppose at the second water break, we were four up, and like, we thought like, we were going to drive on, but it was goals win matches, really. Wasn't it? I suppose the, the sending off seemed to have a bit of a rallying effect on them, and they, they just seemed to just lift a gear when that happened. Yeah, it's, that happens sometimes, I suppose, that after the water break, we kind of came out flat, and... Look at the legs, our legs were getting tired at that stage, so it only took a few scores, like uh, towards the end of the game, it'd be crucial, and sure, they got them, we didn't. In terms of the overall game, you picked as man of the match after a fine individual performance as part of a fairly decent team performance. Your second year running them so close, bringing them to extra time, is that frustrating? Uh, sure, of course it is, like, sure, everyone wants to win, like, but 
like for whatever reason we're just we're, we're coming up close and like at times in each game like we are probably the better team like but we're just not getting over the line at the moment and something we're going to have to work on next year going forward like I know it's very soon after the final whistle but what do you put that down to what do you think the difference is between the two sides I don't know to be honest with you like I don't know maybe belief I don't know you know, that, that just at the moment like it's just kind of hard to take that it's I don't know it's not what I'm saying two weeks time to the start of the inter-county season again are you looking forward to, to that I sure look yeah we'll just have to back train again now midweek and regroup and go from there it's an hard luck today congratulations on the man of the match award but it's probably not the trophy you wanted to bring home with you this evening cheers Bracken thanks In junior C football on Saturday evening, the final of the championship was played between Leitrim Gales and Drummer Hare, and it was Leitrim Gales who ran out winners in that particular clash. 12 points to 1 6, the final score in Park Shane McGettigan. After the game, we caught up with the Drummer Hare captain, Martin Clancy, but first, the manager of the winning team, Peter Goldrick. Peter Goldrick, junior C champions, it has a nice little ring to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, brilliant day for Leitrim Gales. You know, we were thinking about it all week, and we got there and we did it. Tell us about this team because uh, you lost your first game of the season to Havas and to come back and win that championship, it shows a little uh, bit of bottle. Uh, we have a very young team, see, we're, we're trying to bring all the young fellas on, to plan to lead some games and bring up the fellas through the years, you know what I mean? And this, is the, this year we're the most young fellas ever on the team. So it's great for the young lads and it's great to win something which is brilliant again, you know what I mean? How important was winning today to the club or is it just about having that team? Well, you wanted to win something for the club for this year, you know, the seniors did brilliant this year, did mighty in the championship. But it's a boost for the club again. It's a boost for the young players. So these boys are looking for a place in the senior team for next year. And these boys will be here for the next 10 years in Leeds and Gales, hopefully, and bring us something in the future. Tell us a bit about the game today, because it was nip and tuck there until you kind of got a couple of points to put a stretch in at the end. It was anyone's game in the last five minutes, we'll say. We, we, it was coming, it was going, it was coming and going. We just we got there on the last round. Martin Clancy, never easy to lose a final. What's your thoughts after that? Um, as you said there, Breffney, it's never easy to lose a game, never mind the final. Uh, we put in as much as we could there for the 60, 65 minutes. Um, James going off there during the second half wasn't going to help our cause. He's our top scorer, full forward. So sending ball in, we were trying to get a few scores there in the second half. Didn't really go our way. All I can say is that uh, you know our lads have put in 100% all year. We've been training since the start of the year in January. Our intermediate stayed on there training with us, even though they're out of the intermediate as well. They lost in a semi-final to Gort Letra. They kept us training and kept the intensity up as well. So all I can say is that our team put in 100% this year. And for us to go out like that, there can be no disappointment in our hearts, only that we put in 100%. In terms of the, the importance of a second team to a club like Drummer Hare, how much has it added to the whole community in the club? Oh, it's crucial. Um, we haven't had a second team now for the last five or six years. So when you have a second team, you're driving on the first team. Lads are fighting for positions all year long. Nobody was comfortable in their position because they knew they had somebody biting at their heels there trying to get into the team. And that's the way it should be. If you're not pushing on to get into that first team, then you're not really trying hard enough, in my opinion. There's plenty of lads there in that second team today there that are going to push on and be in the first team next year. And it's great. The community really pulled together. Even in times like this, when you see people showing up to a game, you know, coming out of their comfort zone, having a second team is important. And I think if you don't have one, then you're not really driving on to, to win intermediate or win senior. I know last year was a disappointing year for the club, getting relegated from the senior championship. But an uh, intermediate semi-final and uh, a junior final, it's, it's a nice position for the club to be in, to build on for future divisions and maybe for future years, should I say, and maybe to build on a promotion push at intermediate level in the next two to three years as well. Definitely, yeah. Put it this way, we're expecting to be in the final and going to win an intermediate next year. Uh, that's our goal. That was our goal this year. Uh, Gortletra were a great side and we played in the semi-final. We thought whoever's going to win that's going to go on and win it. And that's no... That's no qualms and enough, but we feel that we're at the top level. We want to be pushing on. We want to get senior football next year. We're going to do everything in our power. And you can see there today, we're in a, we're in a final here with our second team. So that's going to push us on even further next year. We, we expect to win the intermediate, and that's the end of the story. Awesome, Martin. Hard luck today, and the very best of luck uh, into next year. And that intermediate championship Thank push. you very much, Brefton. Two semi-finals played in the Junior A Football Championship this weekend. Ahavas and Glenfarn did battle in the first encounter, won 14 to 8 points the final score in favour of Ahavas. And we caught up with Fintan McBrien of Ahavas as well as their goal scorer Fintan Galogli. But first, the defeated manager, Aidy McCallion of Glenfarn Kilty. Aidy McCallion, your thoughts after that? Uh, disappointed. You know, semi-finals are there to be won. You want to come down one. Just didn't happen for us today. We knew coming down our bats were a, a serious outfit. We knew we had to we had to perform above, above what we've done this year. Um, 
I can't fault the players to put in a serious effort, but um, just unfortunately today a few a few firm mistakes led to crucial scores for Avas and then they punished us and fair play to them. Yeah, the minute of the second half, that goal kind of pretty much put a nail in the coffin and then the, the dismissal a couple of minutes after that, a couple of seconds after that, it didn't look great from that point in. We needed the goal and they, and they, they got the goal. Um, it sort of knocked us back a wee bit, but um, it wasn't long after they were down to 14 men as well, so you know, effectively black card, red card evened itself out for the last seven, eight minutes. Um, we tried hard, we battled hard, we put in a serious shift, um, but as I say, a few, few mistakes on our behalf sort of, sort of cost us. You know, even for their goal, it, with two or three players jumping for the one ball, you, know, you just needed some, somebody just to, to make a call on it, and, and unfortunately it broke for them and, and they punished us. In terms of the gap between the sides, what do you think was the, the major reason for the defeat today? Um, I know it's going to sound silly, but there wasn't that much a difference between the two sides. Um, they, they, they obviously had a, a lot of scoring forwards, they have two very sharp forwards inside, um, who, who caused a lot of, lot of damage coming through, and, and I thought we sort of handled them rightly. Um, but uh, overall, they, they, they had more, more boys who were willing to take the shot and get the score off, whereas we were sort of trying to rely on maybe one or two players to try and, try and get that. Um, but listen, it's, it's, they're, they're a good outfit, they're undefeated so far in the Championship. Um, and you can see why their confidence is, is flying. They know how to manage the game. They know when to. They know when to move the ball. They know when to hold it and, and control it and slow it down. There, as you saw in the last five, five or so minutes, they were fit to just handle the ball about around their own 45 and, and then pass it about. So, this isn't your first rodeo as a manager at Glen Farren. Will it be back next year for another stint? Is it? I haven't really thought about it. Being honest, um, it, it takes up a lot of time, and, and we'll just see what happens. OK, well, it's in the hard luck today. Well done on a successful championship, though, at the same time, getting to sem uh, semi-final. Never a small it's achievement. It's, it's, it's disappointing as well. You know, you, you, go in, you go into the championship, you want to win it. And, you know, personally, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed we didn't even get a chance to get in the final. Um, but, you know, some will have to, going forward, will have to install a lot of boys that, you know, your football career is short. You have to make every second kind. You know, it's all right talking about next year, next year, the year after. You've only one chance at a, at a final, you have to take it. Okay, well, hard luck today. No worries, thank you. Vincent McBrien, your thoughts after that victory? Just uh, delighted, Brethren, to be uh, over the line. Uh, it was always going to be um, a battle. Uh, Semi finals are, are there to be won and lost, and, and lucky we are. We're on the on the right end of it today, um, you know. But it, it was a tough game out there. I don't think the scoreline suggests uh, how close the game was. Um, there was Glenfarren were right in it there, right until the the latter stages, and. Uh, I, I suppose the goal, Fintan Logley got there, just put the icing on the cake for us. Yeah, I suppose two big incidents. I suppose the major talking points of the of the game happened within a couple of seconds of each other. That goal, that sending off, uh, it just seemed to turn the tide completely in your favour when it had been relatively 50-50 at that point. Yeah, absolutely. I think yeah, the, the sending off was, was crucial as well because uh, it, it freed up uh, Aidan Maguire for us to sit back for us and to to to, to you know not to let, not to let in any uh, anything soft back at our end and. Uh, the goal was vital. I think the goal, the goal from Finnegan Ogley actually took the, the sting out of Glenfarren. You know, you could see that the, their body language was, was, you know, they were the new they were kind of goners at that stage. You know, so we pushed on. But uh, you have to hand, our, hand it to our lads. Uh, they really did push on in the last probably ten to fifteen minutes. We started winning the ball again in the middle of the field, and and uh, you know, once once you're starting winning your own ball in midfield, you know, you're you're always on a on a winner. Yeah, you didn't have the numerical advantage for long, though. Uh, WWE style clothesline almost <laughs> took Fergal Clancy out of it. But yeah. uh, your man saw the, the the line for that for well, effectively the end of the game. It was a black card, but uh, it was in the last ten minutes, so he didn't yeah. come back on. Um, what do you learn from today's game that you'll bring into a final next weekend? Well, I suppose, really and truly, with no disrespect to any of the teams that we've played before, uh, that really has been our first test. Uh, in fairness, and and uh, we actually have learned uh, a lot. On the line, I'll probably not just uh, let everybody know what we've learned. But uh, as a management team, we've taken a lot of things uh, from the game. Um, we've taken a lot of positives, uh, but there was some negatives to it as well. You know, we had some lads just didn't uh, perform to their ability. Um, but uh, you know, as you know, Breffney, you know, lads will have good days and bad days, and and you know, the next day, the lads that didn't perform today could you know have stormers again. So. 
you know, as I said before, like it's just it's great for Ahavas to be back in the final. Clune or Manor Hamilton, Glencar Manor await next week. They play later on this evening. Any personal preferences? The, the local rivalry with Clune is that an attraction, or do you really care who you play next week? Uh, not to be honest with you, Brefney, we haven't really uh, thought of, of a final. You know, we at the start of, of this campaign, uh, we had said that we'd take one game at a time, and that's what we've, what we've done. Our f full focus was on Glenfarren today, and we knew coming here today it was going to be a battle, and it was a battle. And you know, you know the lads will enjoy themselves this evening, and uh, you know we'll get back on the training pitch tomorrow or Tuesday or Wednesday night, I think it is, and uh, then we'll start focusing on on Clooner Manor. But we've no preference. You know, a final is a final. It doesn't really make any difference. There's, there's no handy cups been handed out, so we'll have to work hard. Uh, whoever we're playing. You've been here as a player yourself on county final day at a senior level. Your your second year with Ahavas is is a realistic to even dream of maybe replicating that in the in the next five or ten years. Is that a possibility for this club? You have a nice young brand of, of footballers coming through the club at the moment. There is. Uh, we uh, we actually have a, a good panel of lads there. They're they're great, honest uh, bunch of players. Uh, you know, we have a panel of whatever it is, 32, 33 players there, and uh, you know, for uh, I said it to John Connolly there earlier on. You know, for a rural club. Um, to have that amount of players is great because it's not simple for rural clubs anymore. Um, but absolutely, uh, you know, this club, uh, you know, uh, personally, I don't think it belongs in junior, but we are where we are and we have to get out of there. But uh, I think, you know, we, we would be uh, well fit to compete at intermediate level, but we have to gain the right to get there. So that's our objective. Our objective was at the start of the year is to, to, to obviously get out of junior. We're not there. We, we have another battle ahead of us and uh, you know county final day is a great day but you know there's a cup to be won and that's our objective obviously. Listen, congratulations today the second last step on that stage uh, wish you the best of luck next week. Thanks very much Berkeley. thank you. Vinta Galogli uh, great way to kind of cap off a very miserable day in terms of weather but I uh, must be delighted with the result. Yeah it was tough conditions to be fair but um, we set out to get to a final this year in the Junior A Championship and thank God we're we're back in one now this year, so happy all round, anyway. I suppose the pivotal moment came in that second half. It was four or five points between you, but it looked like Glen Farnham maybe coming back into it, but you hit the back of the net with a, a great strike from about 13, 14 yards, and it just it was all one way from there. Yeah, we, we kind of knew coming into the game that the goal was going to win it, and it was just lucky the way it fell now. I was a no real good shooter, but hit, hit the back of the net anyway, and from then on, it's kind of plain sailing. Just had to defend. And how much of a difference did straight away from that kick out before the ball was even kicked out? Uh, they had a man sent off, and uh, you had an extra man. You had that seven or eight point cushion. It must have been in your back of your mind, thinking this is game one now at this yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah. To be fair, it was a bit of relief, but um, yeah, once the man went went off, sure, it was kind of just defend out the game and just just play the last ten minutes and hopefully get through it. That's pretty much it. Of course, now final probably next week. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but possibility of it being your near neighbours clone. Does that add anything to the to the final experience? Oh, of course, yeah. Like it's always tough games with rivals, and um, I suppose with clone someone near, we haven't met them in a long time, so it would be nice to meet them. But we'll take anyone who comes in the final. It doesn't matter. We'll we'll play the same game no matter if it's Savannah or, or Clune. How important is it for Havas to to get back up to that intermediate grade? Oh, it, it's hugely important, especially for the younger lads coming through. Like, you don't want to be stuck down the junior grade. Uh, intermediate, there's far better football being played, and that's where we want to get back up to. Well, listen, congratulations today. Great performance. Great goal, even though you yes. <laughs> don't seem to, <laughs> to realise it yourself. But fantastic goal, and uh, well done, and best of luck in the final next week. Thank you. Thank In the other semi-final, Glencar Manor Hamilton put up a good fight for the second teams at that level, but it wasn't to be for them as Clune. They continued their path to the final with a 1-8 to 10 point, a single point victory for Clune. And they now face their local rivals, Ahavas, in that final. After the game, we caught up with Luke Sheridan, who just saved a penalty for Manor Hamilton, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, we spoke to Philip Charles, Gavin Reynolds and Seamus Maguire of Clune ahead of that final whenever it will be played. Philip Charles, you must be delighted with that result. Absolutely delighted, Breffney. Look at um semi finals are for for winning just, you know. We've not done one yet, as I said to the lads. Today was all about getting to a final and look at we're there. We didn't make it easy but we're there. 
he had a bit of a mixed bag with penalties a great save from the matter Hamilton keeper it kind of looked like it might be beyond you at that stage but you, you rallied well to hit over those a couple of late scores to just keep that scoreboard ticking over yeah no I, I, I knew once we you know once we were in the game it was always going to be there for us um, and in fairness to the lads we lost we lost a man early doors we were down to 14 and that was never going to be easy in those conditions and you're playing a team against like Manor Hamilton that has a wealth of experience they held the ball up well but we just stuck with them uh, yeah we got the penalty in the second half and keeper pulled off a great save but you know I still I still knew that we, we'd be th still in the shake up if we just hung in there and thankfully we did and got the scores in the end to in terms of the game, you talk about the experienced players. They would have had a few lads with, with plenty of senior experience. It's not against the, the rules of the law, or the written law, but it, it's possibly maybe borderline on the spirit of the law in terms of lads dropping down to that level. Any thoughts on that in particular? Uh, not really. Look at that's you know, good good sport, fair game. Look at um, I see if you, you talk about Manor, like they have, they have experience all over the field. If you look at number twenty two, there Bino McDonald. He, he gave an exhibition early doors. We had. I don't know two, three different men on him, and he, you know, like he's probably mid thirties at this stage. But you know, you can't, you can't, you can't say anything about that. Um, you know, different. It was, a, it was probably a fact of the first team, but it wasn't. We know that it wasn't. But they've still got a wealth of experience and great players there on show, as you've seen. And we just about pulled through, and you know. Of course, now a final in a week's time against a club you might be all that familiar with yourself, Ahavas. A uh, bit of local rivalry, bit of split emotions in yourself, or is it very much all for Clune victory on Sunday? Oh, look at you. As I said there to another man, I I live in Clune now the last 12 years. My kids go to school in Clune. I feel as much a part of the community as anyone else. That said, um, it's nearly 20 years ago to the weekend that I suppose I won a senior championship and Finta McBride led that team out. So... Okay, of course, it's mix, mixed emotions. I'd probably rather be with somebody else, but you know, that's that's the way football goes. Um, I, I won't be expecting too many phone calls from my family this week, but you know, they'll be they'll be for the green and white. My sister's the current treasurer, so look, at it's that will probably be a bit of a sideshow for people like you. But once we step onto the field next Sunday, you know, I'll obviously be edging for the Clune boys. Listen, congratulations today. Well done on a, on a great victory. Uh, a lot of people will install you as favourites on a wet day. Maybe not so much favourites on a on a on a good dry day. Uh, any wor worries about how that weather might play out in the in the hands in, the, in a week's time? No, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't agree with you there. I don't think we. You know, I think I have asked to be firm favourites. They, you know, they stroll through. Even today, they they you know tough conditions would never have suited their young players, and they you know they put. Glen, Glen Farn to the to the sword, um, so you know Fintan will have them lads buzzing, and you know th there's a load of youth in there. We're, we probably have lads coming to the other end of the spectrum, so um, but we'll be giving it a good shot, and you know. Well done again today, and congratulations, best luck in the Thanks final. Thanks, Gavin Reynolds, he must be delighted with that result. Yeah, very happy now, considering um, coming up against a very good Manor Hamilton team, full of lots of experience. And going down to 14 men so early in the game, I thought gee, we, we were going to be under a lot of pressure like because they, they started the game very very well. It's, so it was going to be an uphill battle, but we, we dug it out in the end. In terms of the performance, particularly towards the end, it was always a one-point game between yourselves and them, but you had that opportunity with the second penalty. You nailed the first one very well, but the second one, you went for the same spot. Keeper, I suppose, predicted it and, yeah. and got down well to turn around the post. Well, I suppose when you get two penalties up against the same keeper, it's always hard to know, do you stick or do you change? So... Um, I always, I'm happy, always happy going down the bottom right if I can, but uh, he, he knew where I was going and he, he, it was a great save by the keeper. You rallied well on some fine frees and some fine uh, shots from distance late in that game when it looked like it was really in the balance. Uh, it takes some nerve to do that in the semi-final of a yeah, championship. Yeah, look at the, the lads worked very hard to, to win them frees and, and you know we had to go defensive to you know up against the extra man and we broke them down and we got forward and we won the frees and it's just a matter of trying to get them over the bar like there was a very strong wind but the lads worked hard today to, to get in the position to win them frees. Great team effort but yourself and Owen Keegan just seem to be in the right place at the right time just to, to create those opportunities, win those frees or take those scores. Yeah, myself and Owen kind of have a, a game plan that we like to kind of take lads on and, and try and win these frees and it's vital uh, getting six, seven points from frees in a game, you know, especially in the tight games like today so 
it's something that we work on. As a free taker, does the weather make much of an impact? Because we, we know it does in open play, but when it's just you and the ball, what's going through your mind in conditions like today that isn't normally there? Well, the distance, I suppose, you know, heavy, wet ball, like, um, you know, even soft ground underfoot, like, you're always a little that bit nervous that you're not going to get the same distance you would on a dry day. So you just have to make sure that you strike through it and, and hope for the best. Happy enough with the performance, given you're down to 14 men after? Definitely. I thought we were, were in big trouble when we lost Seamus. He's such a, such a key player for us at midfield, you know, big physical man. So, But look, at, uh, we dug deep and semi-finals are just about winning. You know, it doesn't matter whether they win by one or by ten. Um, getting to a final is the number one priority today and that's what we've done. You're playing your local rivals in uh, Havas next week. It might be down in that neck of the country as well. I hear <laughs> Carrie Gallen be mentioned, although that hasn't been fixed yet. Uh, does that local rivalry help or hinder your preparation for county final? For for me, no. To be honest, it's like it's like this is only be my ever second senior at senior level county final to be playing in. So it's all about just preparation. Doesn't matter whether it's Havas or Man Hamilton or Glen Farren, who it was. The, for me, the preparation is the same. It's all about preparing the best you can, getting the bodies right after today, and focusing on winning next week. How important is it for the club to be in a, a county final at the end of this season? Because you've done very, very well all year. How how big significant is it that you have that county final look forward to? Now? Ah, it's brilliant. Um, it's brilliant. Like that was our aim from the the first day out. I had a chat with yourself, and you asked me what was the ambitions for the year, and I said get to a county final and see what happens there. So that was our aim from from the start, and we're there. So it's all about finishing out the job next weekend. Listen, very best of luck. Uh, Best, well, well done today. Hard luck on the penalty miss, yeah. but uh, you played a pivotal role and you definitely were a uh, key part of that team that, that won that game today. So congratulations. Thanks very much, Brittany. Yeah, Mr. Guire, back in a county final. It's been a, a little while since your last one with the Intermediates back in 09, but uh, most people are allowed to be back and after a fine performance today against uh, Manhampton. Yeah, we're very lucky. Uh, a lot of the game, it didn't look like we were going to be in another final. We're down a man early and Manor kept us at bay and was scoring lovely points. and. Only very lucky we missed the penalty and near the end of it got a few great frees and the back's done well and the panel has done very well and we're lucky to be there. Now obviously you're fairly experienced yourself, you've been around this team for the last maybe two decades plus. In terms of uh, the results and in terms of the performance, you go down to 14 men so early in the game, what do you do at that stage as a, as a collective of 14 on the pitch to, to make sure that you don't lose the momentum at the loss of a player? Uh, we tried to keep it tight until we got to the water break and work from get back there, work from there to see how we're going to plan to, to leave the extra man from our Hampton and we just kept at it. Every man had to work ten or twenty percent harder and and then we got there. In terms of the conditions, how much of an impact did they have on the game? Uh, the ball was very slippy but um it was the same for both teams, so what to do, you do the best with what do you get? I've asked next up next week, county final. Uh, does it make it a bit harder when you're playing a local team? A bit of that rivalry creep in? Does it kind of take the mind off the football a bit more? Eh, not really. It's it's another team. You go out any day, whoever you're playing, you're playing. Like it doesn't. It's 15 again, 15. It doesn't make a difference. I've asked a very young team playing great football. Bet Glen Farn handy enough there today. They look very good, scoring lots of points. In terms of that final, what's the, I suppose the next seven days hold for you and the, your teammates here? What do you do differently? Not much now. It's everyone has to go to work and play, do a bit of training. And just lucky it's seven days. It's not too long. You can't do much to get ready for the final now. Okay, well, listen, congratulations today and thanks for having a chat with us after the game. Best luck in the final next week. Thanks, Brett. Luke Sheridan, your thoughts after that defeat? I um, suppose Brett, just disappointed. You know, um, I suppose it was a tough tough all day out there with conditions and it was wet ball you know sloppy play you know the quality wasn't always going to be massive standard like but I suppose you just had to play 15 on 15 and we just came out the wrong side of it very narrow in the end so I'm just very disappointed. There was never really much in the game a point or two is all that separated the teams the whole way through the game yeah. really. Yeah. Um, fine penalty save though. Yeah. Uh, disappointed that you don't get to celebrate a win after yeah. pulling that off because yeah. it looked at that point that you might have had the momentum. We did, and I thought that we were playing really well, and we started the second half well, and we just never got going. And, you know, the penalty, um, it was great to save it, and then you'd be thinking then we could kick on, but it just never worked for us in the second half, and we just never got going. And we have some great players there around the pitch, but just today, it just wasn't our day. And like you said, it was always going to be nip and tuck, it was always going to be tight, point or two in it. 
But it was just Clune that came out the better side and fair play to him. Uh, you talk about great players. There were some fairly experienced players on that mm. junior team from Manor Hamilton today. Mm. Some lads with, who would have featured in the senior championship heavily over the summer. Must be great at this level to have those lads to call on. Absolutely, yeah. And sure, I'm still only young. Like I'm only 23 and I'm still relatively new to the senior team. And to have them boys around you, like the McDonald brothers and... You know, boys like that, James Rooney, like lads that are seasoned senior players, like they're the lads you look up to and they're your old models when you're out there. So it's great to play with them in junior and then kick on and try and break into the senior team then. What, so. What's next for the club? Obviously, uh, just the women in action now at this stage. That's right, yeah. Well, that's brilliant for the club today. It was fantastic and I'm over the moon for them. So we can't be too down in the dumps after that today because of the girls. So we're all cheering them on now for next weekend. Well, listen, well done uh, today. A great save, unfortunately, on the wrong side of the results at the end. Well, you Thanks for having me. Cheers. And that, folks, is all we have time for today. We would love to hear from you if you have any news of any sport that's going on at the moment that we might not be aware of. We do want to cover as many and as wide a range of sports as possible. So please get in touch with us, info at leitrimdaily.com or hit us up on any of our social media outlets at Leitrim Daily. We'd love to hear from you. I've been Breffney Early. Thank you so much to everyone for coming in and having chats with us and talking to us after games. It could be a while before we have a normal show back uh, with any kind of sport on it, but there will be plenty of activity on the Leitrim Daily podcast over the next couple of weeks with the art show and a few other additions back into the fold. Uh, I'll be back on Friday with a sports preview show of all the national level sport that Leitrim athletes are involved in. Talk to you then.